months before the attacks on New York and Washington, Keepers of Freedom production crews were in New York City for the 21st National Veterans Wheelchair Games. Mike Victor followed the competition and inspiration of the games. On the track and on the court, on the diamond or in the water, the spirit of these American military veterans is loud and clear. Never give up. Never give up. Independence Day 2001 in New York City. More than 600 veterans converge on the Marriott at Times Square for the National Veterans Wheelchair Games. The ever more popular event began 21 years ago by the Veterans Administration, interested in getting disabled veterans back into the world. These people that were at that hospital took me and said, come try it. You got to try the wheelchair games once. And I looked at them. Oh, <laughs> you got to be kidding. I said, I, I can't even move. I can't even hold a fork. The paralyzed veterans of America joined the VA effort and now believe it's their best tool for rehabilitation. The EPVA is one that got me interested in this, or there was no way. I have found this is the bridge for me. It's not just a meeting place and a fun place. It has restored a lot of confidence in so many of us. They can come out into the world and do whatever they need to do, that they can believe in themselves, that they have the self-esteem and the willpower and determination to do anything they want to do. Numerous sponsors pitched in. For many, family members, coaches, and man's best friend came along to help. For all, the volunteers of New York, more than 2,000 strong, were a constant presence. They were there to clean the stage, keep the score, support the courageous, and carry their fellow man. Huge numbers of city police and firemen volunteered, many who would later give their lives in the first hours of the attack on America. But on that day in July, before the world changed for all of us, some vets went to see Lady Liberty in the shadow of a skyline that would soon change forever. There, they taught their grandchildren what freedom really means. They still team up as days of old, and though their pace is different, their cause to live remains the same. They didn't give the ultimate sacrifice of their lives, but many of them gave up many of the things that we take for granted uh, every single day. And America is indebted to, uh, to veterans, and we should never forget it. Participants choose between two dozen different sports. They are divided by their capabilities. Some wheelchairs are powered by arms stronger than most able-bodied men. Others simply will their machines to life. This is their ride into freedom. This is my old chair, so <laughs> a 95 model, so we'll see what she's got. <laughs> the contestants enjoy a unique combination of camaraderie and competition. It's one vet encouraging another to the next level. Everybody's looking forward to doing the best they can and cheering everybody else on too. Many see this as a preparation for the real game of life. If we get back home, we have to compete against other people. And uh, the games are actually a training area. Uh, wheelchair games open up a whole new world for me. They get you exposed, they get you around other wheelchairs, they bring you out into public. It helps you build your self-esteem. Johnny Jones walked into Vietnam as a proud Marine. When he was carried out, he vowed to continue to live and inspire others. You see people from all walks of life and people with greater disabilities than you and you think that you got a disability. When you see people that have disabilities greater than you are, it makes you feel great too knowing that they are out competing. Ron Priest lost his leg before he had a chance to demonstrate his Marine training. As one of 127 first-time participants, he's nurtured by those who know the ropes. Many ask, are these just feel-good games or true competition? Can people without legs really play hockey? There is a penalty box. They take as many shots at each other as they do at the goal. They are here to win. And hockey is no exception. The softball championship was won by a team that kept nothing in reserve. You've got to come out and play. You don't, don't just watch. You've got to play. It's, it's too fun to give up. It is. It's a, it's a program that starts guys involved in sports or, you know, challenges them out here this week and they go home and they're challenged. They overcome some things, you know, like employment. The day was shared with dozens of local children in wheelchairs, brought together by actress Bo Derek, who's dedicated to veterans. Her husband and her father served their country. She spent this week honoring the spirit of courage of these veterans, the same spirit that took us from 13 struggling colonies to the world's biggest power. 
the same spirit which will guide our service men and women as they bear the burden of today's battle. It's so inspiring and you know I, I love sports and I go to a lot of games and boxing and all I just love all sports. I've never seen athletes like this with such tenacity and willpower and persistence. It's really impressive. That's the way to do it. You know firsthand the difficulties of reaching for the heights in the face of overwhelming odds. But you have scaled the heights and you have succeeded magnificently. And you have found great courage in yourselves. For these veterans, sports is much more than just something to do in the leisure time. It increases their productivity, their socialization, and their participation in life itself. No matter how they fare in the competition, each of these veterans will leave here having tested their medal and found it to be golden. In New York, Mike Victor reporting for Keepers of Freedom.